Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a great day. All right, so I'm gonna take you around and show you a little bit around the house. I'm not gonna show you whole rooms or anything because y'all have seen everything, but I'm just gonna show you how I've styled some of my new finds that I've gotten from estate sales and the thrift stores lately. Um, I have all of my summer decor down. Everything is just kind of back to normal. Um, I like to have a little bit of calm before the explosion of fall and all that comes with the holiday season. Um, I know some of you are gonna look at things like, that's not calm, like everything's still packed. It is, but it's calm for me. Um, you know, there's nothing on my island. I love my island being empty. Um, so it's just a little bit of peace and tranquility before, like I said, all the things come out. So I'm gonna take you around, I'm gonna show you some of the new things and um there i do ask you a question and whatever so if you can answer my question let me know i want to, i want your opinions doesn't mean i'm gonna do it necessarily that way but i do want to weigh all my options all right guys y'all have a great one and until i see you again happy thrifting okay so i wanted to give you a better look at my styled cubbies and what i ended up doing so that is um Oh, see if it'll focus, trying to focus on my finger. A ironstone bowl that I think I may have won at auction. And then these cubbies I got at that estate sale a couple of weeks ago. And I just added a lot of the crockery that I had gotten actually from that sale, along with my marmalade jars, some of my favorite flower frogs, and then I put in some butter pats. And I put in my little, my teeny tiny little butter molds. Y'all, we have cleaned that, that's not dirt. So I just thought that made a cute little way to style a lot of my little crocs I had gotten. I've got two ironstone pitchers on either side with butter paddles and some greenery. So all of that did lead to some changes in this cabinet. These, are the plates that I went to work and had a wonderful surprise from one of my friends there. They are ironstone plates. Um, they are amazing. Of course, those are from, that one is from that estate sale. And there's where I put my tomato spoon. And actually, y'all, I think I may have another one. I need to look around something caught my eye the other day and i was like oh my gosh i think i actually have a tomato spoon <laughs> and then down here i have a few more pieces of the crockery that amazing bowl that i got at the same estate sale for like two bucks i can't wait to pull out my brown transfer wear that is that little shoe mold that i got Our, um, there is the sugar sack I had gotten at an estate sale a few weeks ago. And then I want to show you one of my very sweet subscribers and friends, Cheryl, sent me two amazing antique photographs. That one, um, there are two people in the back, and that is all the children. Now, at first we thought that those might be parents, but they could be grandparents or it could be a school. I'm not really sure if it's a school because some of the children are really young, but it is amazing. And I was trying to find a frame, but y'all, I know the angle's bad. I already had a frame. I got this frame at that amazing estate sale that I stayed at for six hours, remember? It fit perfect. It's like it was made to go together. And then she sent me this one. And I do believe that that is like an all girls school. And how great is that? It's 
especially you know me being in education I love all the classroom um, pictures and then I did add this one down here just um, two little children I had gotten that at that estate sale that I spent six hours at that frame came from um, City Thrift along with that frame so then as much as Greg doesn't like this picture this one just kind of worked perfect. He thinks it's kind of creepy. He doesn't really like it. And it's one of those like where I think they took a picture and then they came in and like drew over it. I don't know. It's kind of weird. But thank you so much, Cheryl, for gifting me those two pictures. I know it looks like you can't see them and I have them hidden, but that's not the case. Um, you definitely can see that one perfect and it balances well with that. And then once you walk around, you can see that other amazing picture. So this is how all this came about. And I think it is just fabulous. Okay, y'all, and then real quick, I wanna show you the gallery wall is 100% complete. Um, we did add a few more pictures. We kind of felt like on the ends, it just needed a little something else. Um, so there is, the, I don't know if I showed you, but that little girl in that frame that I kind of added the rub and buff to that I got from City Thrift. That frame came from Goodwill, but she had to go on this wall, the oval one. Her hat and dress are just magnificent. We put the soldier up here. Um, he was up with my 4th of July stuff. We found that family. Oh, I told you about him. That was Dr. Kirkpatrick. And then we put that beautiful Mommy and Me. All of those frames were thrifted. There were two frames that weren't thrifted on this wall. <laughs> That's Lucy. She got to come running down the stairs. I will show you those when I get to them, but we did thrift all of these pictures and all of these frames. That is an oil painting that we got in an estate sale in October. There's that wonderful antique mirror. Now I am very short and I don't have the step ladder out, but more thrifted frames and pictures. That is the um, most affordable one yet. Those pictures and frame came together for $2.99 at City Thrift. There's my Spanish American War soldiers. Probably my favorite right there. That one is, I've told you, um, a sweet friend gave me that. That is her husband's either grandfather or great grandfather. I'm not sure. And I have the egg basket that he is holding. My wonderful trolley. A very distinguished gentleman up there. There's my Civil War soldier. There is that amazing school portrait. Um, we love that. The ladies in their store. This was a Hobby Lobby frame, but it's perfect. And that one may have been a Hobby Lobby frame. I feel like we bought three. And this oval was a Hobby Lobby frame. And then we have this family that was thrifted frame. So that is our finished wall of history. Is it gonna stay like this? You guys know me. If I get a very interesting picture, um, that will fit in a frame, you know, I'm probably gonna get it and I might change it out. I'm always looking for something interesting and unique. Now, many of you have asked, how did you do that? Would you do show us a video on how you did that? Guys, I'm just gonna tell you, 
We do gallery walls like nobody else on YouTube. We do not put up tape. Um, we don't mark the spot. We don't lay it out on the floor. We don't put up pieces of paper. What we do, um, and it doesn't take us that long. What The longest part is collecting. But actually getting the wall up does not take that long at all. Some of this is up with nails. Some of this is command strips. Because um, some of these frames, there was really no way to use a nail. Um, but one thing, what we do, we start with the center. And I will say, one of the mistakes we made is Greg centered the floral painting with the love seat. Not with the wall. Now, why is that bad? Because I actually think I'm getting ready to sell my love seat. I have too much furniture in here. Um, I know some of you are like, well, don't sell the love seat, but I may be making some changes in here just so that it's not so crowded. Um, but anyway, so he put that in the center and then we just played off of it. Now I am very symmetrical, so I like things to match. So, um, you know, on the bottom, we have the wedding picture and the two ovals up at the top. We just tried to, okay, we have a vertical, we have horizontal, let's see if we can match that. Um, we thought that this and that symmetrically went well, while the soldiers does not exactly match the couple over here. The amazingness of the two photos, I actually thought balanced well, I know that sounds crazy. Um, we have this large, photo over here so that's why I balanced it with that frame this side is heavier than this side um you know I have my oval here I have my big oval there and I staggered it so there's really no technique that I can say oh this is what we do um other than we try to balance you know going out from the wedding photo we have the two ovals we have the two vertical pictures. I have two small ones here. Oh, here. I didn't have the same space over here, but I brought two small ones there. Um, then this side does get a little different because like I said, it's heavier. Um, under this large one, we have the two smaller ones and the larger fit picture. So I sort of mimicked that the best I could. I have the large one, some smaller I loved the vertical of that just for something different. So I am probably not the one to give you the best advice on how to do a gallery wall. Um, I know there are YouTubers out there that can show you. They use the painter's tape. They cut out pieces of paper that are the same size as their frames. You know, they lay it all out on the floor. They take hours to do it. I don't, I'm not doing that. Um, Nope, I'm very impatient, um, hence my collection that I've gotten in less than 16 months. Um, I just, you know, we're just, we just kind of wing it. If we don't like something, if something doesn't look good, we pull out the hole filler, patch it up, move on, change it up. Now that some people may say that we're, do, we're working too hard, we're doing extra work, but that is our system for doing a gallery wall. Um, if you try it and it doesn't work out, please don't get upset with me. We've also been doing gallery walls for a long way, many years before I even started YouTube. Um, we have always been decorators. It's just, you know, our styles are changing all the time. Okay, here is where I have that Fastoria cake plate. Um, you know, I thought, well, let's just mix a little Fastoria with a little milk glass. I do still have my bunnies out. I've taken down all of the red and white in the dining room, so it is no longer um, summer, 4th of July-ish. Um, it is just kind of the blue and white, like I keep it. As you can see, everything just kind of went back to normal. I did take a lot of the milk glass off the table. It was just kind of driving me nuts because I had, there was so much stuff on the table. Um, Greg says I'm trying to move his milk glass out, but you know, that's not really true. You see the big, huge punch bowl right in the center. So there are my new salt cellars. Thank you for those of you that reminded me of what those were called. I did put out my Fastoria glasses. 
the place setting y'all don't laugh it's just a lot of i've got milk glass flow blue Pistoria, and then the little teacups lots of things you may recognize from estate sales and just some of the hauls that i've showed you now i did switch my platters um they are all flow blue instead of just having um the white ones mixed in there there's some better pats I had gotten at City Thrift recently. Let's see. I think you guys have seen everything else. All of that, it just went back to the flow blue and the milk glass. Now I did hang that beautiful oval um, antique mirror that I got for 20 bucks. I did hang it right there. So I have an idea. As much as we, as much as we love that, it really is starting to not match the room now, much like the um, little squares I had above this love seat in the living room don't match. So what we're thinking about doing is taking all that down, possibly putting that floral portrait, uh, floral oil painting that Greg got at that estate sale, maybe there with the oval mirror, possibly, and then hanging my other two antique mirrors on either side. Um, we're thinking about trying that because we love that, but the farmhouse doesn't match well in here anymore. So what do y'all think? What would y'all do? Would y'all take that down and put up something else? Let me know in the comments. So when I took the fourth down, I just put the swan back up there. This is a new um, terrain I haven't showed you. I won that at auction for $10. It does match the wheat pattern that I've got going on out here. So I just moved the punch bowl down in the middle so that I would have terrain, punch bowl, terrain, thought that made more sense. Um, there's where I put my little rabbit. He's just sleeping there so good. Y'all, what have you asked me about these lights? Now, I purposely don't have them on because they're dead. I don't purposely. They're just dead. I got these on Amazon. I absolutely do not recommend them. They are horrible. Um, they take a very long time to charge, and they do not hold a charge. They might stay on um, for a couple of hours, and then it just starts to die. I have it set um, to where it will is motion. It just comes on when we're in the hallway, and it still it will not keep a charge. I don't know what brand it was. I just know it was the main one. It was like um, number one pick when you look up these battery operated magnetic strip lights on Amazon. Um, we don't have outlets in the foyer, and right around here, so we couldn't really do electric lighting but I do not recommend these. So, you know, if some of you find something better, please let me know. Now, also, there is where I put that cute little um, cabinet doll hutch thing that I had gotten at that estate sale last weekend on Greg's birthday. And um, I just put some little, you know, doll, probably, um, oh, I can't think, tea set stuff there. And there's my little, as cargo. Okay, now Greg bought me, and I've not showed these, but he bought me these butter pats. Look at how stained and awesomely crazed that one is. They are not stamped anything. They are so pretty. And here's the last one. So that is where I'm styling these, just kind of for now. Just have them like that with that really dark one right on top. And so, so those are just some changes I've made and some placements of some new things. But y'all, we gotta appreciate the sweet little bunny one more time. He's so stinking cute. 
Okay, so I told you guys I would update you with the table situation. I did sell my rectangle table. We moved the round one in here. And no, we have not painted it yet because it's just too hot. But so far, you know, not loving it. I'm getting used to it. I can't do near as much in the center. Um, I did have my round riser that on there that... Um, I got it at the junk hunt for the summer, but it does take up an awful lot of space. So just yesterday, I kind of changed everything when I was taking the summer stuff down, the like, you know, the red, white, and blue stuff. Just made that a little bit more simple. Um, I like it because it takes up less space in the room. So, you know, hopefully we'll get it painted and I'll get used to it um, and it'll be fine. You know, everything's gonna be fine. All right, and let's just start real quick up here. That's the only thing that's changed up here is I did put Greg's little candle maker mold thing. A little bit of rearranging in here. Um, not a lot, but I know y'all like seeing this cabinet though. Okay, and I put my other little hutch up there. Now that stuff's almost too big for it, so I do need to maybe look for a little bit more doll dishes. That'd be really cute up there. I had some and I sold them and that was dumb, but for now, that's cute up there and it's really the only spot that I have um, to place it.